Don't get AIDS or you'll end up like this man. The doctor will sentence you to death on the spot. Um. You tested positive for HIV. The for HIV. The doctor told him to prepare for death as soon as possible because he can only live for 30 days at most. When he heard he had AIDS, he couldn't believe it. He even laughed a little. He was a real man. How could he get this gay disease? And he usually looked down on homosexuals. Ron thought the doctor must have taken the wrong parrot to leave. Before leaving, he threw the report card in the doctor's face. When he got home, he continued to smoke and drink as usual, not taking the doctor's word seriously at all. But soon he began to experience dizziness. Raining in the ears, blurred consciousness and other symptoms. Although he said he didn't believe the doctor, when he said he had 30 days to live. But the doctor's words made it difficult for him to sleep or eat. That's when a friend said, what if they're right? This statement broke Ron's mental defenses. The next day, he went to the library to look up information about AIDS. When he realized that the spread of AIDS was not limited to same-sex transmission, he began to panic, thinking back to the girl who had pinholes all over her body that night. Ron broke down. Uh, he went back to that doctor, hoping the doctor would prescribe him some set, because it was the most effective drug for AIDS, could delay his death as long as possible. But the doctor told him that the drug was still in clinical trials. So the doctor said there was nothing he could do. The doctor said, you could join a local patient support group. In other words, they told him to wait to die. Ron couldn't take it anymore. I'm gonna die in a couple days, and you're telling me to go cuddle with a faggot, a depressed. Ron couldn't sleep. He didn't want to die like this, so he bribed the hospital nurse. He asked the nurse to get him some of the hospital's life-saving medicine. After getting the medicine, he continued to live a life of debauchery, but it didn't last long. On the 28th day after Ron's diagnosis, the hospital stepped up surveillance and the janitor ran out of options. Ron took out all the money he had and asked the janitor for help. The janitor gave him the contact information for a Mexican doctor. The caretaker said, there is something there for you. Feeling cheated, Ron punched the caretaker in the face. He didn't realize it was too hard and passed out on the spot. When he woke up again, he was in a hospital bed. Here him eats out of his house. With all his savings, he left the sad place and traveled alone to Mexico. On the way, he thought about the last 20 days of his life. He was discriminated against and stared at. He finally couldn't hold back his long suppressed emotions. How desperate is it to have AIDS? <laughs> This man is a terminal AIDS patient. The doctor says he has only 30 days to live, and today is the 29th day. Thinking that tomorrow will be the last day of his life, fear and despair flood his mind. Thinking of the girl he saw that night, he feels remorse. He raises his pistol to end his life, but the reluctance in his heart and the fear of death, he wanted to struggle a little more. Looking for a chance to live, because he still had a lot of unfulfilled wishes. This man is also an AIDS patient. He has been sentenced to death by the doctors. Tomorrow will be the last day of his life, but he miraculously survived. He started a patient's club. Dues are $400 a month. He distributes smuggled drugs to patients for free. This was done to avoid legal risks, since the drugs were cheap and had no side effects. So more and more people came to the club, but fewer and fewer people went to the hospital. So the hospital reported the club, the Drug Enforcement Administration soon shut down the club, confiscated all the smuggled drugs. The government even introduced a new law against smugglers. Ordinary people had to have a doctor's prescription to buy drugs. It became illegal to buy drugs privately. The number of club users began to plummet. To make matters worse, the drug administration raided the club every day. This made it impossible. At the end of his rope, two of his former clients reached out to him. They offered Ron new office space for free. That took care of the rent, but the cost of medication was still a big problem. Just when Ron was worried, like gave him some money in order for Ron to continue buying drugs abroad. Ray sold his insurance policy for the money because he knew his days were numbered, so he did everything he could. With this money, Ron continued to buy drugs in Mexico, but from the doctor's mouth.